First, it was the attempt to sanitize secession by claiming it was about states' rights. Then the New York Times published a piece about the governor of South Carolina in 1860, who promised his legislature that if they seceded, they could reestablish the African slave trade, declare whites the ruling race, and punish all abolitionists, quote, summarily and severely, if not with death. In our third story tonight, Glenn Beck once again attempts to rewrite our nation's past, this time whitewashing the stain of a compromise that extended the life of slavery. During yesterday's Congressional Constitution Readathon, the section containing the three fifths compromise was omitted. Beck took the opportunity to, once again, mangle history. Three fifths clause. African Americans, three fifths in the South, three fifths of a human being. That's an outrage, unless you know why they put that in there. They put that in there because if slaves in the South were counted as full human beings, they could never abolish slavery. They would never be able to do it. It was a time bomb. Progressives should love that. In the even a broken watch is right twice a day category, Beck is correct to say the South wanted slaves counted as fully human. But the anti-slavery draftsmen of the Constitution did not want slaves counted at all. Counting slaves while simultaneously denying them the rights of free people would help southern states increase their share of representation in Congress, and it would have been pro-slavery. What's worse, the more slaves the Deep South imported, the more seats it would get in the House. Beck is dead wrong to claim the three-fifths clause led to the abolition of slavery as well. Nearly 75 years later, it led to the Civil War and 600,000 American dead. And sadly, it did not have to be that way. One author of the Constitution, Governor Morris of New York, proposed a sliding scale in which slaves would count less as years went on. It was rejected. Yale law professor, recent guest on this program, Akil Reed Amar, explains in his book, America's Constitution, a biography, quoting, a declining ratio approach would have avoided glaring defects while putting the slavery bonus system on a gradual but sure path to elimination. Slaveholding regions would eventually stop getting extra house seats as rewards. Mr. Beck's fascination with the remaking of the history of race relations in America is not new. Here he is last year with professional history reviser Richard Barton discussing African-American preacher Richard Allen. Richard Allen was also, um, he was a preacher at a white church, right? A mega church. A, a mega church. He, he, was, he had preached to 2,000 whites at a church in Philadelphia. He, Again, give me the year. This is about 1790s. Okay. How many here in the audience have been led to believe that in the 1790s, blacks and whites hated each other, it was slavery, right? And how many people, raise your hand, how many people said, look at that, Yeah. look at that. Joining me now to talk about the implications of this growing historical revisionism, Russell Simmons, co-founder of the pioneering hip-hop label Def Jam, chairman of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding, and the author of Super Rich, A Guide to Having It All. Good to see you, sir. Nice to see you again. Right. It's easy to, it, it, it's easy to dismiss this, this guy as an idiot. It's easier to dismiss yes. this, yes. but this is not being done in a vacuum. We have these cleanup for the sesquicentennial of the Civil War, Haley Barber on how great things were yes. in the 60s in Mississippi and Yazoo City. Finn. Right, all that. There's exactly. A lot of it going and on. This, why is it going on? You know, it. I'm the chairman as a foundation, as you pointed out, and we get the research, and we've been moving as, uh, to a more tolerant space in this country for the last 12 years. So yeah. long as I've been chairman, this year we took a massive step backwards. Uh, and, I, and I see it going everywhere, and people are able to say things today that only 12 months ago they couldn't get out, certainly not in a boardroom. Um, uh, yesterday I was on my way to see you. I came out of yoga. I'm excited to, to see you, and you guys canceled me. And, and, my, and because I'm selling my book, you know, uh, my super rich book, it's about consciousness and happiness, so it wouldn't suit this, but anyway, <laughs> so I'm on my way, and he said, no, no, you're going to see Sean Hannity. Oh. So I get to Sean Hannity. Sorry. And, and he was in his you know, little happy mood, and so I knew he was going to pounce on me. And he, and he read something that I wrote about, you know, Islamophobia and the rise of anti-Semitism mm -hmm. and, and the rise of just, just, you know, the way people are, the Tea Party's effect on, and Fox's effect on on a, a, a collective, and it's so bad. He started, he said, Islamophobia, where? No. He said, where? And, and then he, and it was on, and I, I realized, I started to talk a little bit about, even though I'm somewhere far to the left of Dennis Kucinich, and maybe even you, in terms of my politics, I started to say, I was, I thought the president would come into a good season because he's going to compromise. Maybe he'll finish some of the prison reform work. Mm -hmm. He did Don't Ask, Don't Tell. There's some other things he could get done. And when I, when I listened to him long enough, and I, I, all the yoga just disappeared, I was thinking to myself, <laughs> what if they really, the, the power,
to, to really reverse so much, yeah. to do so many things that, that reverse health care, to, to uh, it, it is a real fight for this country, for the soul of this country. And I was surprised because I, I thought maybe the president would get away with, you know, but he's not atypical. I know. This man, Glenn Beck, is, is, is gaining in, and Sarah Palin's got a following. There's a group of people in this country that the level of tolerance is sliding and they're pushing it and they're part of a, a, a whole, it is, it is a mass movement away is, from the American dream. Is this, is the idea that it'll go back and change history, is that to make people doubt what's going on now so that you say, well, there's no, the problem was never that ba bad to begin with, so it can't be a problem at all now? Well, there's no history. Anyway, I mean, I'm an uh, ambassador for the UN for the Transatlantic Slave Trade Memorial. Mm. And, you know, I think it's important, that history, because I said I wouldn't accept a post unless we talked about the 27 million modern day slaves. So you need that history. You need to know that six out of seven people died in the, tran in the transatlantic slave trade coming across. You need to know how horrific that was because that's kind of a gift. That suffering is a gift to humanity so that we cannot repeat these same things. But with the, you know how short it takes just a second for us to go down the wrong path. Yep. I live across the street from the World Trade. Imam Rauf uh, has been preaching down there for many, many years. The idea that 28 out of 29 people voted okay, it's all right, and then Fox News got a hold to it, yep. and the whole country, 70, 80, our governor, our African-American governor, who knows what can happen, was going to negotiate to move the prayer center, our own governor, yeah. so anything can happen, so we have to be careful, and thank you for uncovering these things, because it's pretty serious, the way it's... Uh, we're going. It's unbelievable. Uh, Russell Simmons, the new book is Super Rich, A Guide to Having It All. My apologies for sending you over to Sean Hannity by accident. <laughs> is that I, your if fault? I'd known we would have done My publicist did it to me. Right. <laughs> My apologies to everybody. I'm a whore to sell books. By the way, you look very <laughs> slick in your, without you. your tie I, today. I forgot to bring one. That looks good. All right. Take care. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Thank you.